This is Ryan Belleville. He, he loves Canadian. Belleville. He's I Canadian. Belleville. He is um, one of our best uh, comedians slash comedic actors in Canada and the whole world. Right? This is 100%. Nailed it. Out of and the game. Um, and your bio is so long. You've done so many things. I'm not even going to attempt to do it, but he's been on everything. But like a lot of us moms might, might recognize you from Working Moms. Yes. Yeah, Why Lionel, Lionel on Working Moms. Why did that have to end? I feel like that was like every w woman and mom needed that show for the rest of her life. Well, I mean, it's it's a bit shocking, like that they they wanted to end on a high note, and uh, they did. I mean, it was the number one show in America in like May and June, I think. It was the number so one streamed show. I when you're in Canada and you like you know like we know it was filmed in Toronto, right? It's like Degrassi. Yeah, you think I think to myself, it's it's our show, like that's our Canadian show, and then. I remember my sister-in-law, she lives in the States, and she's like, oh, my God, that's my favorite show. And I'm like, you know that? Sh that's our show. <laughs> it's, like, um, it's like that other one, too, uh, that... Uh, Shoot, it's like, great. Yeah, that one. Yeah, that's and ours, I too. I was also going to say, every Adam Sandler movie, I feel like, is in Canada, like in Toronto. I'm like, what? why is he trying to... What's he doing up in here all the time? Cheap Cheaper? to shoot. Cheap to shoot in Canada. Yeah. Ryan, I'm going to ask you a question. We were just talking about um, <laughs> like milks and if milks are making this because you were on working mom. Yes. Are, yeah. You're like, are milks a trend? A thing. Oh, and she did. What, one of the characters totally had was someone's son and he was into her. And yeah. I was, yeah. you know, um, he goes, Nat goes, do you think that like the hockey dads want to sleep with us? And I'm like, absolutely not. No, and I think they might. I think no. <sighs> And then I was saying about MILFs, I was like, I feel like it's a trend, not necessarily an attraction from the men's perspective. Now, not that you're talking for all men. Right. I'm just saying, I feel like it's like, is it like an, an, an always thing that like young, some younger men are just attracted to? It's not a trend because it was on the housewives. And I it was, just mean it's like it's a fetish, fetish rather than like, they're kind of like, it's a large net rather than like, it's a, it's a genre rather than the person. I think when it comes to like the dynamic of like uh, the milf and like the the, the prey, the, the cougar and the prey, uh, that the um, the 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 milf generally goes after the the younger person. From my experience, when I was younger, but it's like kind of reels in the young the young man. Right, right. Because oh, he wouldn't because he wouldn't have like the confidence to like attempt with her. So no. she has to open the door. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a power. So if I want it to happen, I'm just going to have to open the door. Yeah. That is, I'm so glad you brought that perspective up, uh -huh. to be honest with you, because I was thinking that, that, you know, teenage boys were like, whoa, there's a milk. But no, that's just not, that's, you're right. It's, it's opposite. And teenage boys, I mean, like 25. So, yes. To date those kids. Right. Yeah. So for the younger people, but I think milfs are always, I don't know. Like when I was younger, I liked old, I did, I dated older women for sure. Much older. Mm, I think are we talking about like dating? The no, date? No, 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 I'm not talking about dating. Let's loosely date. No. Okay. Uh, the the oh, the biggest age gap when I was young for dating was like six years, but then the biggest hookup difference was like twenty. Oh, <gasps> yeah. how old were you? 21? 20, 21, 21. Yeah. I'm. Yeah. A, that's a world I'll never know. What was she like? No. Uh, <laughs> I yes. think, I She's think like, it, was, it was disappointing. It was a little disappointing. Not for it was disappointing for me because I was expecting like, oh, this lady's gonna. You're so young. Like, oh, she's gonna show me the ways. But then it was sort of like, all right, young man, you do your thing. Like, impress me, and I'm like, no, uh, uh, you're oh. supposed to <laughs> usher me across the <laughs> across the rainbow bridge into the promised land. And no, so it was just a bit. It was a bit like, oh, okay, it wasn't quite I the right know. thing just in the room with them and like i i was there and he was 21 and oh my gosh you didn't have your shirt on it was crazy you don't talk about the <laughs> comedy show do you what's that that's not part of the comedy show uh no, no. And this is just coming out actually I, I this is like repressed memories that i just uh i'm just coming coming back to but now i like i, I think i like i've always liked age appropriate women like now the older i am i like my age oh, really so they get more yeah. Attractive as uh, to you, they're attractive at uh, your age is attractive to you, not for her age. She's an yes. attractive woman. Yeah, the but older I get, the sexier, like, like it's always like my age bracket, like I find it more attractive. 
Like young, I, like I look at young people, I'm like, ugh. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's great. That's great news. I think I'm like that too. No, you're not. Oh, you have a very large swing. <laughs> that's a true. <laughs> um, so you're on a stand up comedy tour, and it's called. Uh, I'm not your daddy. How appropriate, how appropriate this conversation is right now. I'm not your daddy. Why'd you I'm call it that? The I'm not your daddy comedy tour? Well, it was just that sort of, that cheeky, you know, everyone's looking for a daddy nowadays. You're talking about the MILFs, but everybody's looking for, uh, um, what was his name? Pascal from The Mandalorian. Daddies are very hot right now. And people love Lionel. And I've definitely had multiple people come up to me and say, ooh, will you, will you be my daddy? Like randomly at like playgrounds and stuff like that. Adult, yes. adult women, not children. But uh, yeah, so I'm not, I just thought it was a, a good title for the tour for Canada's favorite TV dad. So what does that mean looking for a daddy? What, a what sugar, is, not what, a sugar what daddy, daddy, daddy. mean? Not a sugar I think, daddy. I think daddies basically, when you're talking about like, when you talk about MILFs, daddies become the term for the, the like the DILF version of, you're looking for a daddy. Mm. Do you think younger women are looking for daddies? Yes. And then especially in the, in the gay scene too, like younger, yeah. men, older that, men, daddies. Yeah, that, I, we hear that a lot. Yeah. I have a daddy around the corner from you. Oh, you do. But Mike, so here's my thing. You go on tour, yeah. you <laughs> do like, everybody knows you. Okay. Right. You, <laughs> you do these acts. Then what do you do? What do you mean? Like, what do you do when it's over? Like the, that night, it goes, it, the, like, oh, like, does he go out or just go to sleep? Yeah, what do you do? Eat pie? I, because everyone is talking about you being, you like, your tour is, I'm not your daddy. What do you do after? <laughs> daddy do after. What does daddy do after? Daddy's tired. Well, I get a little wired after comedy shows. Like, in real life, I'm tired at, like, 9.30 p.m. But as soon as you do a show, you're, like, you're wired. You want to go out and do stuff. Uh, like every time I'm in Toronto, I'm out doing shows. I'm in Toronto right now. I'm like out doing shows and, uh, like dropping in and, and then I'm going out. But then I, I, I tend to, oh, yeah. um, I can't Where party like I was in my twenties anymore. Where do you go? Where do I like go to, to a club to a bar? I, I go wherever the, like people take me like randomly. I was at a show, uh, this summer and a bunch of people like hey we're going out i'm like great i went out and had some drinks and next thing i know i'm in an after hours bar and i just looked around i'm like everyone's so young and like height and full of optimism i'm like this isn't my crowd and i just left <laughs> at that point <laughs> so you you're a dad yes and yeah. what do you got for for chill for kids or kid what do i have i have a seven-year-old and i have an almost 13 year old right on the cusp yeah. So I have a question for you. When you go out, do you talk about your children or do people ask you if you're a dad or have children? And then when they find out you're a dad, are they more attracted to you because mm. you're a dad? Like, they're like, whoa, you are a dad. He's like, you, they're like, you look good for, for a dad. A dad. <laughs> I think some people are uh, definitely into like a dad. There's that sort of like, oh, he likes his it, it, showing that you like your kids. I don't talk about my kids too much because I try to keep them private. Like I talk about them on stage, ironically, and I air some of their embarrassing moments. But uh, I try to keep. So you yeah. have an almost fourteen-year-old, and you're going up on stage, and you're when you need material, and you pull material from your own life, and you're talking about embarrassing things. Is that thirteen-year-old ever like, Dad, what the fuck? I don't know. So this is this is a thing I'm 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 worried about because like he I heard you you talking about this a couple podcasts ago. Like, do we talk about our kids? What do we filter out? Because I had a whole bit about when he was three and he came in and he was flicking himself in the wiener, yeah. and he's like, "Hey, it's getting bigger." Like yeah. he was this this whole thing about toddler boners yeah. and how they're a real thing and toddler boners happen, but nobody tells you about it oh. and. And you you have to you can't Google toddler boner. You just have to kind of like hope that it's normal. Uh, but like I have that bit, and like he's gonna at one point listen to the album or see it like the TV clip of me performing it and be like, "Dad, you're talking about my child erection." <laughs> I'm like, "Yeah, sorry." Yeah. So does he know that yet? He doesn't. He doesn't. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like that's the crazy thing about like when those, these kids are getting older, right? Like mm -hmm. I had one time I put up a TikTok and my daughter literally called me from school. She's like, "All the girl, everyone is looking at your TikTok. You need to take it down." I was wearing a nude 
bodysuit at the dermatologist. I was not naked. Uh -oh. right. But she thought that I looked naked. And that was the first time that she called and she was like, take it down. And I was like, oh my God, cat emergency. We need to take down our TikTok. I'm like, I've worn less clothes on TikTok before, but she had an issue with that one. It was that one. Was that one. So like, they start to be like, that's, you know, he, you, cause you're going to want to use his, um, his puberty time. Puberty time is such a funny time. It, that's, that's the big one. I'm like, I know that he's got a great, my kids have great senses of humor. So I know they'll generally be fine with stuff. Like right now I talk a lot about how smart my, my son is way smarter than I am. And so I'm talking about that, but okay. I'm, I don't know. I am a bit worried about it. Like he's in that awkward growth phase. Yeah. Like, can you ask him, like, can you be like, Hey, I have this, I'll, I'll stop talking about it if it really bothers you. But if it doesn't, like it's uh, relatable and funny because a lot of people don't talk about it as a toddler. You could always just preface it now and be like, and if you're not cool with it, we'll stop now. Yeah, the the ship sailed on that one. That that that's been playing on XM radio for a few years. I'm like, he's like, well, if he finds out about it, I'm like, sorry, buddy, that paid for our Hawaii trip. So this, this is exactly it. Like we talk about like our our husbands. We try not to be specific, but I'm like, if, we, we just yeah, to our husbands. So to try not to be. You know, it could just be any of my husbands or boyfriends. I'm referring to when I'm talking about men. But I'm like to him and like to the whole family. I'm like, I part of our job is just you're talking about our lives and it's so true that's how i get paid and just so he knows every toddler had a boner like mm. it, it's not just his boner everybody has a boner i have three little boners running around my house you know and they everyone. boner for life like boners are forever not just like when they're toddlers so it's like yeah i also don't like i try not to crack like, i mean it's always positive it's always done with i don't think anyone sees my act and goes oh this guy doesn't love his kids and his kids aren't good but also children ruin our lives a little bit and we need to vent. And that's why people come see me because they want to vent about their kids and their life. So I'm like, uh, I think my kids will get it. I like even, same with my wife. I don't crap on my wife. It's like that trope of standups like, ah, oh, the old ball and chain. But I'm like, my, my wife's hot and cool and we get along great. Like we get frustrated with each other, but I'm not going to just muscle through a bad marriage for the sake of what five minutes of comedy i guess okay. not worth it i want to ask you what she thinks of you going to the after hours club <laughs> oh, yes. yeah. yeah so you okay so going on the road is, is complicated for people who don't go on the road it, it looks like a lot of fun it looks crazy it looks like free part like you're drinking you're having fun what is her interpretation like is she just used to it and she's like that's what they do they go out he's at an after hours club till four in the morning i'm cool over here well i think it's more I mean, I called her the next day because it was funny because it was sort of like I was just out with like comics and people and I kind of went with the flow and I thought it was hilarious that I wound up in this. It was the kind of place when we lived in Toronto together almost 20 years ago, we would have wound up in. And here I am. I'm like looking around. I'm like, who are these children? <laughs> and I went home. So she's pretty cool, but she knows I'm not going to get into too much trouble. I'm. I'm too old and tired. This, there's a point you can't party. You can't get into too much trouble. The problem is, is that you can't get out of your head tomorrow morning. That's my problem. If I could just take something. You're pretty good at it. I'm not as, I really want to be better. I just want to take a, a kind of really bad. Yeah. Like 11 yeah, you are. Lock, I'm like, I'm, I have to get up. I feel terrible in the morning. I, I'm like, I just want to go to bed because then I can wake up and function the next day. No, And it's so nice feeling fresh the next day. But like, then you're like, but like, this is just my life and I'm, shouldn't I be having more fun? And how come I have to retire that kind of fun? Because tomorrow you feel so bad. I'm, where is the hangover dr drug? Where is that? They're holding well, they, on to that. They they have one. It just, there's something that just came out. Where, how, what, only in LA? Like, well, how do we have this? It's probably one of those American things that gives you like cancer, but you don't get a hangover. But I heard <laughs> about it. it. It blocks the, it blocks whatever the chemical is that gives you hangovers. Is it like, can I, do I need the doctor to prescribe it? I can get it at shoppers. That's about as far as I go. I mean, I'm not, I'm, I, it's pro maybe it's, I don't know if it's real science. Maybe it's uh, something I heard on Joe Rogan. I don't know, but it does sound like. Do you think, do you think that like um, motherhood and fatherhood is way different or do you think it's misinterpreted and it's kind of the same now, but like, m like, do you think it's different at all? Like, do you think you're between you're, a husband? Like, no, like, do you dad? think your wife 
as a mom has it different than you as a dad in terms of like the load, the like, you know, cause there's a lot of conversations around like women and like what we do and, you know, so do, do, you, feel, do you feel the guilt and the birth? Like, are you just saying that? Or do you like, do you, I mean, do you feel the same load that women say we feel? I think that there's, we have an interesting dynamic because my wife's an editor for film and television. So she works long hours. And then when I'm shooting a TV show, I'm traveling and I work long hours. Or if I'm on the road doing stand up, I'm gone. So we kind of swap who's A parent, B parent. Like when I'm home, I'm there. I'm, I'm, I'm doing like drop offs. I'm doing pickups. I'm taking kids to practice. I'm doing all the cooking. I'm doing like all that stuff. Uh, and then she comes in and we, I like Brene Brown has a great, uh, quote about, uh, looking at your partner and being like, Hey, how much can you give right now? I've got, I'm, I've got 80, I've only got 20%. And I'll like, I'll give the other 80%. Uh, so it's like, we do that a lot, kind of checking in with each other. Um, but there are moments where I'm like, I think that like everybody looks at dads and, um, we have it easier in the world's eyes, you know, like. I, yeah. We get less judgment from people. We get like judged positively just for like, if I'm out with my daughter and I'm like making dinner or I'm in the park or we're just playing and I'm doing maybe typical mom stuff, uh, maybe the only dad at the PTA meeting, people are like, oh, good for you. Like there's just this sort of energy towards me yeah. that I don't think moms get, which isn't fair. Your partnership is um, uncommon. I mean, we always wish that um, we had made it more even in the beginning, but 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 we didn't, and we're getting we've gotten a lot better since we tra- yeah, travel. Yeah, traveling is huge. But um, you know, them having taking paternity leave would be really important too. But a lot of men don't do it. But uh, that kind of even evenness is very. A very uncommon. well you kind of need it for your stand up like for your tour like if you don't like that's your material right it's like being a dad and having dad material yeah and surviving and do yeah being a being an actual dad and being a, and it's also fun i'm like i had i've traveled so even last year i, I did a hundred and ten thousand miles or hundred twenty thousand miles of travel and uh my kids are so like this is the only chance i get with my kids was the only time i get to have like the seven year old's just going out of baby stage. So we're like almost, we're almost done with little kids. That's the last time I'll ever have little kids. It's so. Eight year old. I'm like, you're my baby. Look at my baby. Like, you're yeah. a baby. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, that's the. So I, I really try to spend as much time with the family as I can when I'm not touring because it's the one in 10 years from now, it's, it's going to be gone. Um, okay. So I feel like stand up comedy seems like the scariest thing I could like, maybe like that and being an astronaut, like that they, they, would be sorry because you don't often they die. <laughs> well, they do die a lot. There have been like five deaths. It, it, in the course of forever, there have been a lot of, I would way, I would hate to be on a cruise way less cruising if I was a cruise ship director. Oh, well, we, all, well we all have our fears. I guess I don't yeah, drive on the highway. You're afraid, so of cruises? Huh? You're afraid of cruises? Yes, she says everybody dies. There's a morgue on there. Then we talked to this woman who worked on a cruise and have she was validated you the hurricane everything. they were stuck in the other day. You go on a cruise stuck in, in the hurricane. hurricane? Oh my How god. Did you know the hurricane was coming on a cruise. You're gonna die. You're in the there. middle of nowhere in a sea. You know, no one's finding you. You go over there, you're gone. Done. Gone. Yeah, and food poisoning and diarrhea. And all. Astronauts are following you. They're like watching you. And there's so thing. many Dateline specials on murders on cruises. Oh my god, it's like never one over. Gone. Oh my god, you didn't do not go on a cruise. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go on a cruise so bad. The, the diarrhea scares me. Like the uh, everyone on a ship with diarrhea terrifies me. Huge morgue. Huge, and you don't. If you die, you're on there till you, yeah, yeah, till, till you get back to where you started. And then we had a tour manager who used to be like in charge of all <laughs> the talent on a cruise ship, and she was telling stories, and she validated for cat. And like, now, oh yeah, we Jen, can never go on a cruise. I, Natalie's like, so I tell you, so cat mm-hmm. thinks that people die on the cruises all the time. She's like, they do every time. <laughs> every time I'm on, someone's dying. You want to hear uh, a crazy fact I heard about Disneyland? Yes. yes. Okay, I, I know somebody who I from the inside. Yeah. People aren't allowed to die at Disneyland. So they, so, run them, they run them off? They, so basically, you're having a heart attack or you're like, something's really bad. They'll keep doing compressions on you until you're at, they will not call a time of death anything at Disneyland. Why? Because bad PR. It's the happiest place in People the world. People die all the time there, for sure. Walking, eating funnel cake, dead. Yeah, we don't do- Choking on a churro, just <clears throat> gone. 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we are the happiest podcast alive. Um, okay. Uh, yeah. So I feel like being a stand-up comic is like, I, I don't even know how you guys do that. That sounds so scary. And especially when they say like in the beginning, you have to just go try it out. And sometimes people don't like your material. Like where do you get the, not the balls. Where do you get the, the no, where do you get the confidence to just be like, I'm going to help people laugh at me today on stage. And if they don't, that's part of my life. It's a terrible job. Yeah, I think you get to a point where you can kind of, you know, it's going to go fine. I mean, like you do it so many times, you're like, this will go fine. And there's times it kills. And sometimes it's, I've done shows where you show up and you're like, everyone's hammered. It's a corporate event or something. And you're like, okay, this is going to be kind of crappy, but it doesn't really matter. You know what I mean? Yeah. But you, you must do, I mean, you, you both must do lots of live appearances, right? Pretty yeah. often. I think I think it's different standing up on a stage alone and just you by yourself trying to make people laugh. That's so scary. Um, because are they coming knowing you or are they coming to a comedy show? Like, you know, I think a lot of people walk in sometimes with a bad attitude and then they you, they want you to make them feel something, but they're already like judging you for something that like there's no converting them. But I think a lot of people are there to laugh and want to laugh. So they laugh. I feel like comedy is having such a huge resurgence right now. It's so huge, massive, and everyone's so hungry to see it. Like it's huge online, and Why? clubs Why? are busy. Why? It, I, I think it's just people want people want kind of uncensored adult grown up stuff, right? I, at least like, I do. You're likable. Like you, you're likable. You have a good energy. Like I would like you without you even being funny. Thank you. Well, I, I think I think that's people want to have. Yeah, they want to have fun and have and have it be kind of also like I like kind of dirty comedy too. I don't like comedy that's too safe. Okay, but I was we were just watching this this thing. And Did you talk about sex in your comedy tour? Oh yes. With your wife? Uh yep. Yes. Well, unless he's having sex with other people, and that is just it. fucking juicy. I want to know more I was about just, that. Because is she okay with sex on a sex on tour? Like sex on tour, not you having sex on tour, talking about sex on tour? uh yeah she's she's fine with it she's like we're we're like mostly like i'll talk about just the exhaustion of trying to have sex when you have little kids and like trying to find places and where to do it and how to keep it hot and exciting so you feel exhausted he said they're trying to find places but he's exhausted it. trying to find it okay yes we're not all we're not we can't like we're, we're we're in a different phase of sex we're not in the we're not in the put on the rollerblades and have a rollerblade adventure kind of sex we're <laughs> Uh, you, yeah, my husband's like I don't even I don't even recognize you. Like I could never <laughs> picture. He's like if we got rollerblades, I'm like never. never. He's like the backyard on the deck, never. never. I'm like nowhere, <laughs> never. And I'm not doing it in a hot tub because I'm just gonna get a UTI. Um. So, but <laughs> as far as comedy goes, and everybody wanting it unfiltered, isn't it kind? Of, or are we past this? Isn't it kind of a scary time? that there's so many things that you cannot joke about. Like that is an even scarier part of being a stand-up co comic now. Like I know you're like, if I'm not, a, if I'm not a racist and I'm not unkind and I'm not a sexist, mm -hmm. then, then I should be fine. But there's so many things that you used to be able to joke about that you can't now. Is there anything like left? avocados? You can't joke about avocados because avocados are expensive. And if someone can't afford it, then you fucking said avocados. And that is wrong that you said avocados, that I don't like avocados. Isn't that my, scary? You've triggered my poverty. You've shamed my poverty by talking about avocado toast. Yeah. Uh, I think that we're, we're at the other end where people are just exhausted by hypersensitivity. You know, like it's just people, people are, yeah, people are just exhausted by it. It's all okay. people want to go out and, and laugh. When I was a kid, I don't know uh, if it, if this was for for uh, you ladies, but I loved sitting at the top of the stairs and listening to my parents downstairs have a party, like smoke cigarettes, and they're drinking and they're telling dirty jokes. And I'm like, it's my favorite. It's my favorite thing. Like you hear grown up talk. Like that's having fun. It's naughty. It's inappropriate a little bit. I still like my parents are in their 80s, and I still like. I like I nothing makes them laugh more than telling them a dirty joke. Your love... parents sound really fun. Parties, smoking, uh, and dirty, dirty jokes. jokes. Like jokes, yeah. Yeah, my <laughs> parents never had a party. Your parents must have had parties. Lots of parties. Yeah. Yeah. And I was put upstairs and I'm pretty sure I was drinking what they left. Like they didn't finish. I was just cleaning house as they were. Uh, you know what I mean? Just suck back what was empty in the bottom the bottom of the drinks. Oh, that's so 
Grand Marnier. Whatever it was going, whatever was going. And what about um different, like if you're you're touring all over the place, do you find like different audiences? Uh, do you ha- do you have to like tailor your comedy for different like Canadian, American, British, whatever? Um, and do you know that? I I it's interesting because I I um Americans are very different. Like a crowd. I was just in Vegas. I was just playing the MGM and uh Americans like it a little like they like it a little harder. They like it a little uh brasher. They definitely like you walking the line a bit more. And Canadians do get a bit they're 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 a little more like, oh, should I is it okay if I laugh at that? Is that all right? Can we do that? Yeah. Is that appropriate? Someone laugh. Someone laugh. Okay, uh-huh. we can laugh. Yeah, we can laugh. Yeah, can I check in? Can we we is it okay, we're, we're safe. So there's a little a bit more uh timidness, but um like Americans are just a bit more up for they, they want it kind of in your face more. They're yeah. louder. Makes sense. They're, they they let you know exactly how they feel and they are like they are like right. It's like you have to tame them versus um Canada, you have to ignite. It's like tame, ignite. You know what I mean? Like it's like Yeah, yeah like the uh, I always liken it to Canada. We're in Canada. We're, we're trying to look out for each other in theory in America. We're cr- trying to look out for us or we're trying to look out for ourselves in America. Like the, it's the peanut butter thing. My son couldn't bring peanut butter to school in Canada ever, ever. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Which makes sense. Yeah. Yes. Uh, in, in America, they're like, I got a letter saying, did you know that a great nutritional kind of cheap meal is like peanut butter sandwiches? And and like, okay. And I asked my daughter, do you have any allergies in the class? She's like, yes, daddy. We have like six kids with allergies, but there's, I'm still getting the email. Cause they're like, this is America. If you want, if you want to have anaphylaxia, that's your choice. You're not wow. going to stop us from sending peanut butter. Amer- Amer- wow. We have it some of our wildest shows in America where they are just like actually Calgary and America. It's like yes. Calgary crowd in America are ready to rumble. Have you done the UK and Australia? Yes. Yeah. I uh, like uh, Aussies are Aussies have that kind of American they're 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 uh they love making fun of you they love making fun of each other they're v- funny people uh England is a bit England's pretty rowdy too England's very rowdy like oh, drinking yeah. parting they kept saying the word c-u-n-t mm-hmm. and then they were like we realize you can't say that here I'm like yeah no you cannot refer to every female as a c-u-n-t like no that's that, not what you can who, say who's that comedian who always which always says that said cunt Oh, which one? There's um uh Jim uh Jim Jeffries. Yeah, and Roland yeah. What did he, they? They were just got. They were actually strippers, and they were here, and they were <laughs> friends they, of ours. Friends of ours. Yeah. <laughs> and they're calling them that. Was like, oh, we will learn very quickly. You can't say that. I'm like, yeah, no, not to women who are Dory. You cannot be like, hey, cunt. How, no, you can't no. say it. No. Oh no, my no. god. Are you excited for tonight in Toronto? And I, I know you're going all over Canada right now. Where yeah. can they find you? Where can they find your tickets? Where should they go to do Where do you want them to go to know all about you? If they go to my, if they go to ryanbevel.com, there's links to all the tickets, uh, 18 theaters across Ontario. We're doing our first leg just Ontario, Canada. And then our next leg is going to be elsewhere. Ryanbevel.com, my Instagram, uh, it's all linked up on there as well. How long are you going for? Uh, I'm flying back and forth. So I'm doing I'm doing like two weeks of shows and then I'm going home and then two weeks of shows and then home and then two weeks of shows and then I'm I'm done the tour. And then I'll I'll take a break until the new year. And I know we were just ending this, but do you like living in LA instead of living in Canada? Because we talked to so many parents who are like, I don't want to raise my kid in LA. I I it's it's a little stressful, but I love I will say like LA parents like real LA parents or like Whole Foods parents are a bit, uh, a bit strange, but I love LA. I love America. I think it's like, I love surfing and all that. I miss Canada, but I just, I also love that wild stuff happens in LA that doesn't happen anywhere else. Like just for, uh, this is just for an example, like years ago, I just remembered this. I had a friend who just moved to LA. He was really young, new comic. He was 21 years old. He was scared. My wife and myself took him to a bar. We're like, it's just like any other city. Come to this bar. We went to the bar. We're having drinks. And like, see, it's normal. We got some wings, just like in Canada, having a pint. We're laughing. I go to the bathroom. I hear somebody come in and light a cigarette. And he says, hey, don't tell on me. And I'm like, I don't know who it is. I say, I'm not going to tell on you, buddy. I turn around. It's a hammered Kiefer Sutherland. 
this is like peak 24 fame peak when he was like drinking and he looked at me and he could tell that moment he's like oh here it comes he's gonna be like jack bauer and i just looked at him and i said oh my god you're tommy douglas's grandkid your grandpa created universal health care which is actually true Kiefer Sutherland's grandfather is Tommy Douglas uh, and is the founder of Canada's universal health care. And that's what I said to him. And he got so excited that I didn't recognize him from 24 that I recognized that his grandfather created universal health care in Canada. And he gave me a huge hug and then he bought our our things, uh, us drinks. And then he came over to our table later and sat down next to the 21 year old out of the blue and said, oh, hi, how are you? And go, this is our, our friend. He's in from Canada. He goes, you're a pretty one and kissed him on the lips for a second five seconds and then got up and left la people are wild right yes it was like it was one of those moments where i was trying to convince him that la is not weird and he just got kissed out of the blue by Kiefer sutherland so, this is so weird yeah. oh my gosh okay and um your show tonight and tomorrow do you go like does it start at nine yeah do you want do you want some tickets I, i'll hook you up yeah i want to come i i, I like I, I want to but i'm like nine o'clock i know I Why does it start so late? I know it's it's insane. I, I like it's it's hard to stay up like to ten thirty. It's a Saturday. He's on a he's on a time change. It's only six o'clock for him. I know. I just mean like all of this stuff. It's so late. But I, I know. I'm gonna I'm gonna tr- I'm gonna I'm gonna try and make it. I'm gonna try and make because I really I really I feel like laughing. I feel like laughing. I have two sick children, so I probably will with no babysitter. So I will probably be um, and it's the second week of school. Do they have COVID? Are they COVID sick? Or are they no, no, no? No. All these kids have my 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 kids. How do you know? Everyone, they've all got COVID. I don't like, know. I don't have tests. Don't have tests. He's like know. he's sick. He's home. Like even if he's COVID or not, he's home. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I That's what he's at. That's a bummer. Yeah. Okay, so everyone's gonna. Go I wish you all. You're gonna kill it. And you're gonna have fun, and, and I'm gonna try and make it. I mean, I do have a party that I'm actually invited to go to tomorrow. Okay. But, but you're, but you're but it's, it's, it's a neighbor, neighbor party. You'll be. You'll. It'll. it'll you're you know, we might start swinging. I shouldn't miss that. You know, <laughs> you're swinging without me, yeah. you need material. Get out there. Go, go start swinging. Anyways, I'll tell your people if I'm going to come. Well, uh, yes, please. And thank you so much. I love the show. It's so funny. And I really appreciate you having me on it. Yeah. Well, nice. we, we can't wait to, uh, we can't wait to run, run cross paths again and freaking kill it tonight and have the best time. Cause Toronto people, they're your people. They're, they're, they're my kids. Thanks, Ryan. So nice to meet you. Yeah, likewise. Thanks. Thanks so much. Bye.